There are so many ways to get into medical school and I thought that I would share my personal journey into getting accepted into medical school and becoming a physician. Hi, I'm Dr. Intebe. I'm a Canadian trained anesthesiologist and palliative care physician. I am currently working as staff at the moment and my channel is all about education and mentoring pre-med, med and residents as well as just putting in a pinch of lifestyle wellness and uh, travel. So if you're interested, please subscribe below for more videos like this. I would say my journey to becoming a physician actually started back when I was in high school. Uh, I did really well in my science classes and I feel like from there that kind of pushed me into the direction of, you know, healthcare um, and medical kind of fields. And so uh, I was also really sporty and so I was really into hockey and soccer and I do think that the, you know, more of the sporty aspect kind of came into play because with the mixture of being really good in science but also having a passion for sport and exercise science, I actually ended up pursuing a bachelor degree in human kinetics or kinesiology uh, that had a background with a bachelor of science specifically, not a bachelor of health sciences because I know that now there's two different streams or actually there's many different streams and ways of doing this but Back when I was in high school, um, the option was truly just human kinetics or kinesiology with a Bachelor of Science. And uh, I'd say from there, I really enjoyed the program itself in kinesiology. So I had always mixed feelings. I was like, oh, maybe I should do you know, physiotherapy. Maybe I should do medicine. And so I had done prerequisites for both right from the beginning, basically. So you have to be very careful if that's the field that you want to go into, that you see that your prerequisites, that right from you know, your first year of university that you're getting those because sometimes there's like classes that are prereqs to other classes that you need. Uh, so I made sure to set myself up for both avenues, so physio and medical school. Uh, not to mention that in that time, I also did a lot of volunteer work. So I worked for a nonprofit organization um, and it was also sports related. So that really helped because I was doing a lot of hours there. And I also did work as a teacher. So I taught piano and tennis. And so those two things I did throughout the year, um, which really hit on the more like, I guess you could say mentorship avenue. Um, and then apart from that, I also had to, of course, study for the MCAT because the MCAT is uh, very important for most universities uh, across Canada. And so I had started studying for that as well. And I have to admit that I studied for it and I kind of went all out. So there was a, Kaplan had an MCAT camp, basically. <laughs> so I went to that MCAT camp and studied how to get a good mark on the MCAT. Um, I actually ended up not doing that well on the MCAT and in the end I ended up getting into a medical school that didn't even need MCAT <laughs> so I kind of feel like I did that for nothing but you know all in the end it was all good um, but yeah so then during my first second and third year I was studying a lot getting really good grades I have to admit that my first year grades weren't as good as like my fourth year grades and I you know all of you have different ways of grading stuff but basically I had like an 80 89 percent or three plus or B plus at the, my first second years and then and my third and fourth year of, of, of university of undergrad I ended up get bumping up to like a 92 93 um, so my GPA ended up being appropriate when I finally hit my third and fourth year um, for medical school, I would say. And even then it was probably a bit on the low side, um, but it was obviously sufficient. Um, I did end up applying in my third year of undergrad to medical school and I did not get in. I did get offered an interview, however. So I knew that what I had, you know, obviously put together as a package for myself was making the first cut. So that was in and of itself very, very reassuring. Um, and so, you know, all that hard work when it comes to, you know, my paid work, my volunteer work, um, and my grades were on the right track. And then, uh, but yeah, unfortunately I didn't get in when I applied in my third year. So then from there, I actually, in my fourth year, I ended up applying again, but I had all, I was basically finishing on my undergrad. And so I wanted to have a bit of a backup plan because I was like, I do like, want to be a doctor and I do want to go into medical school but I was like I also want to go into physio like I do think that that's something that I would be happy doing and so I had applied to both physio and medical school 
I got an interview for medical school again and unfortunately did not I was actually put on the wait list and then I did not get in and then in physio school it was so it's a master's in physiotherapy and I actually did get into physio so uh, I went on to you know doing physiotherapy and I, I had met so many cool, fun people. And I really thought in that first year of my master's that I was gonna be a physiotherapist. Um, and then going into the second year of my physiotherapy, there was a bit more of a clinical standpoint that I had started already. And on the second year of my master's, I quickly realized that I really, really enjoyed being in the hospital setting and working as a part of the healthcare team. I was working with physicians, also physician assistants, nursing staff and everything. And I realized just how much I wanted to be a doctor. So it was almost a part of my path that I'm very grateful for, not only because it was such a great experience and, um, and learning all that, you know, baseline anatomy and physiology and, you know, musculoskeletal tests and which became very helpful in medical school. Um, and it just helped me realize really why I wanted to go into medicine. Part of me always thinks that I didn't really know up until I did my master's because I truly found the real reason why I wanted to be a doctor, um, which I will most likely get into another video because here's, I'm just talking about my path, but I did want to share that it was almost like an epiphany moment for me that I was like, this is why I want to be a doctor and this is why I want to help people. Um, and so I think I'm coming to terms with that and being in the clinical setting, being in the hospital setting really helped me, you know, explain to others, especially on my interviews, why I wanted to be a doctor and why I would be a good candidate, uh, uh for their medical school. And so that's where I finally reapplied to medical school it was my third time applying. And that's actually the last time you can apply. If you've gotten three interviews, you cannot apply anymore. <laughs> so that was my last chance. Um, and it ended up being that that last chance was all I needed because I got in. Um, and I can still remember the day uh, when I got in. I was sitting at my parents' uh, kitchen table and you know in Gmail where it kind of gives you the, when it, the email pops up, you can kind of see the subject line. Anyway, so I knew I had gotten in even before I clicked on the email, but it was such an amazing day, such an amazing feeling to have all your hard work over so, so many years um, be recognized and to get into the field that you really want to be in. Um, so I'd have to say that I had, you know, quite a few obstacles in the way and, and challenges where I had applied so many times, but I didn't give up because I knew that this is what I really wanted to do. So if that's you on the other end and you're, you know, you've tried so many times, but you're not getting it, you know, keep going, keep trying. And you know what, if, if, if you don't get in, then you know, maybe it's not meant to be. Uh, but on the other side, if you do, then all that hard work was meant for something. So uh, and I, and I tr also truly believe that everything that happens to us uh, is for a reason and helps build us not only as a person, but as, uh, in my case, as a physician, has really helped me uh, connect with my patients um, and be the physician that I am today. Uh, so it's been a very interesting journey. And I do have to admit that when I got in, um, part of me was just, of course, really excited and proud. but. I do think that there were certain things such as like resiliency and um, just being very positive and, and continuing to push through the obstacles that helped me get into medical school. So that's my path, you know, having done a four year undergrad, two years of a master's and then uh, getting into medical school at definitely a, an older age for sure than everyone else, just because I had that, that master's degree under my belt. Um, but of course did help me out for medical school as well. But, but yeah, so that's my journey into getting into medical school. Hopefully that was a bit insightful for all of you. Uh, it's just more bare bones of, of how I got there. But of course, as I've mentioned before, there are so many ways uh, to get into medical school, different paths, different journeys. And uh, I'm just one of the many, but uh, that is uh, how I got there. And 
If you guys have any questions or comments or anything at all, please put them below and I will definitely answer them. I'm going to do a few more videos about my actual medical school residency um, and how I got into how I went through that, but as well as why I really wanted to become a doctor. I'll, I'll be talking a bit about that too. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.